G'day, welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome my new subscribers and I hope you enjoy the content of my channel. Uh, if you missed the last video, the uh, power feed for the new compound slider made, there's a link up there now, you go watch it first, then come back watch this one. Now, for a couple of weeks I've been saying that I have a major update coming for the mill and the part that I've been waiting for has finally arrived, got here late yesterday afternoon. And I'd like to say once again, I'm incredibly blown away by the uh, support of my patrons, and one in particular. Uh, he doesn't want to be named, but he is also the man who's been supplying me with uh, cold blue, and I got another batch of that a week or so ago that he sent over for me. A different one this time, so here we go. But anyway, uh, I'm not going to tell you just what this is. Well, uh, it's over there on the bench. So, follow me over to the bench. I'll have a look, see what it is. Well, there it is. Just what I've always needed. A great big wooden box. Yay. Why don't we have a look inside to see what's in there. It's quite a nice sturdy box. I'll better use that put under my bench. Oh, some white stuff. Oh, bloody heavy. Look at that. It's uh, cast iron upside down cake. Oh, look. What is it? That looks like a milling table to me. Oh, that'll be good. I need a new one of them. All right, let's cut the bullshit. This table is uh, 150 millimeters longer than the old one. The old one's 400, this is 550. Uh, has a, uh, roughly the same heck of white travel, maybe another five or 10 millimeters of white travel. Now I'm gonna have to make some major uh, changes, I think, to where it all bolts on. Because this is about the same size as the top of the with the other ones mounted now, but uh, there's not, there wasn't a lot of uh, information in in the uh, online for this about just how high it was, and I have, I may have issues with clearing the bench because it has to come across the top of the bench and both sides. So I may actually have to pack it up a bit. But anyway, uh, that's what we're going to have to do. Now, I also mentioned, I think in the last video or the one before, that I had to get a suspect mole looked at. And I had it removed a week ago, and I got the results yesterday, and it's not good. It's a malignant, a very rare type of malignant melanoma, and I have to go and get a pretty fair chunk. I'll put a photo just here. I'll show you. That's uh, the area marked in blue removed from my leg next week. The doctor has said that she wants me to do literally nothing for two weeks after she cuts that out. So it will depend on how much of this I can get done between now and when I get that cut out as to whether this becomes a one or two part video. But anyway, uh, let's get this out of here and I'll get on with it. But uh, it's pretty bloody heavy and uh, I've got to figure out how I'm going to get out of there without dropping it on the floor and breaking it. So I'll come back to you. Well, uh, that took a bit of getting out of that box, but I, it wasn't that hard really. First impressions of this, uh, you know, it looks nice. The castings, they're nice castings, but as for usual, you know, there's burrs all over the edges everywhere. But the lead screws, they're absolute rubbish. Cop this one, I've got this locked up as much as I can with these silly little tabs on the side. There's only one up on the side here. But look at this. That's... It's nearly three quarters of a turn of the handle of slop in it, you know, it's just unbelievable. And the handle here, you shake that up and down, this one all over the place like a bloody mad woman shit. Um, so I think the first thing I'm going to be doing with this is pull it all apart and uh, try and clean these edges up, just file the edges off a bit, clean them up, and maybe try and find some either some bronze bushes or some bearings. I'm glad I didn't pull the mill apart now. I left it, left the old table on there on the off chance that I might have to machine something up. But I think what I'm going to have to do is uh, is machine, uh, get get some more new lead screws for starters to replace these because that's just bloody rubbish, that is. And the other side is, uh, X is not much better. It's probably the best part of a quarter of a turn. And uh, see what I can do about making them a bit better than they really are. But outside of that, I mean, it looks pretty good other than that. So I'll have to get on with doing that, see what I can uh, come up with. A little something I forgot to mention. In in the bag that was busted and spread all through the bottom of the box with all the handles and the mounting bolts and all that stuff was a thrust bearing. I don't know where the hell that's supposed to go. I'll have to figure out where that's going to go. Whether they just give it to you as a spare or not, I don't know. But I'll have to uh, see where that goes. 
Not like a hell of a time trying to get this apart. I was trying to lift, took it out, out, tried to get this up that way. You couldn't get it out that way, and you can't. When you take the uh, lead screw, which is a left hand lead screw, out, uh, you can't slide it off because it sits down inside. And eventually, I, tried, I thought, well, let's try and get the, the X axis off first. And once I um, took the lead screw out of there, then it came straight off. But the good news is, I'm not going to have to uh, replace these lead screws because. All that slop in the Y is right there. Can you see them moving there? Just slip around. Once you tighten them up, there's no slop in it at all, really. You can even finger tight this. There's, um, I'll screw it back in a bit. There's almost no slop in it, so that's good news. This one's tight though, so that means there's a little bit of slop in the, in the X. Anyway, so uh, I've got these off. It's quite a nice machine surface. You can't, I don't know if you can see them or not. No, you can't. I'm going to screw this out. Yeah. It's actually quite a nice machine surface on there. But it's a weird size. It's 14.8. Well, I said it might be 9 16 but I doubt it because this is Chinese and metric. So, uh, there's a bit of meat in here that's just been rough bored, that thing. So, if I can find a bronze bush that uh, I can bore that out without taking too much out of it and then bore the center out to uh, to fit this I'll get all that uh, up and down slop out of it and this is all machined here so I'll be able to do it in a lathe with a boring bar just put the chuck and uh, bore it out uh, this is actually the front one it's the same so is that old one <laughs> the one that flops around like that 15.7 versus 14.7. It's a millimetre bigger. How ridiculous. But anyway, so uh, that's that's a, that's some good news. Well, I don't have to uh, replace the lead screws. Something else I found in there which I thought was pretty crappy was these things. This is what they use and that, that's a gib, believe it or not. Look at them. This rusty old bits of steel. Looking horrible. Still got the mill scale and shit all over it. But I've got one piece of brass here, it's the same size as that, or just a little bigger. But it's a bit, it's a half as thick. Might order another piece to uh, and replace these with a strip of brass, I think. Because I don't want to run that crap in there. Alright, we'll uh, get them ordered, so it'll take a couple of days to get here. Alrighty, so I paid a visit to my uh, favourite little nut and bolt slash engineering shop yesterday afternoon and I managed to pick up three bronze bushes that will be just about right for this. I've just been making a couple of cuts here to clean it up because it was like everything else and this is running out of it. Considering that the back has been machined up once before. Alright, what have we got? 15.93. Oh, it's drop them on the floor and knock them everywhere. I'll take it out to 18mm, so we have not 2mm come out of that yet. Bit of a sanity check. end up with this oversize. It already is. But that doesn't matter because I've got to cut a relief in there for this. So back it off just a little. Right, uh, should push in there nicely. Now, there is an oiler. There's an oiler on the top here. A hole in there, so I'm going to have to go and drill a hole in the side of this to uh, to be able to get some oil into it. First, I'll, uh, I was thinking about this is the uh, the end that the power feed will go on to, so I was toying with actually leaving this one sticking out a bit so it, that everything can run on that rather than running on this. But if I do that, I can't just unbolt the one I've got on the other one and bolt it onto here. I think I'll uh, recess it. Yeah. Right, 
Alright, so uh, there's three of these to do. I'm not going to bother video on all of them because it's all the same shit, different part. Alrighty, so that pressed in there very nicely and uh, I actually had to, do you know, this end, machine this part down this morning, polish it up because they just like taking half of this thread off there so it would pass roughly through that hole. So machined it down, polished it up. And I've also given all the other surfaces, this one and the shorter one for the front, a good polish up. Now this one, they've got to take very little out of this. I'm going to be very careful about what I'm doing here. It's about a half a millimetre in total they've got to take out of it. I'm actually starting to wonder if these are bronze bushes or copper or some sort of, you know, a lot more copper than bronze other than um, whatever because it, when I drilled the hole a bit of swarf I got looked more like copper than bronze and a bit of swarf I just got there looked more like copper than bronze but when I asked them down the road for bronze bushes they looked at me like I was stupid they didn't seem to know what bronze is and then I found these in a, in a clear jar and I went yep this is what I want 12.64 is what that shaft is If you can see that or not, you can see how coppery it looks. If you can see it, I'm getting even near enough out of it that time. Pretty good. A little bit of clearance there, but you're running it too tight in there. All right, a whole lot better than uh, half a millimetre or one millimetre of slop, everything you had before. So, I've got to do that to all three of them, and uh, I'll bring you back when I've got all that done. All righty, so there we have it. All three of them are done. And uh, this one I did last, it's got the best fit. So, uh, I haven't greased the, the uh, thrust bearings or any oil in the bush yet. But that's, uh, that's really nice, no play in that. This is the uh, X or the Y axis one, it's, uh, it's come up pretty good too. So once again, no oil in there, no grease in the bearings. Uh, I found something I'm not overly impressed with. I don't know whether you can see it there or not, let me get this stuff off here. Right, can you see that? Look how thin this is here. There's hardly any meat. From, uh, from under there and they look to be some really weird size uh, tea nut for it but I reckon what I might have to do next while I've still got the old table in the mill is uh, is make up some tea nuts for it because everything I've got is for 8 mil studs and things so I'll have to do whatever this is and that's about 25 mil wide and that's pretty stupid really and all three of these are different sizes there's a big lump of casting sitting just there um, and all these edges are rough as so I don't really know what to do because I can't even put the old tree trying to think of some way I could run a you know an end mill up along these edges just to clean them up a bit but uh, I don't know how I could do that because I might just have to run a file down them and now why was it the wife walked out the front door making a noise but I run a file up along here and just sort of try and clean them up a little bit they're actually tapered down in in this way like that it's really hopeless but anyway I'll get on with that so uh that the brass I ordered yesterday didn't get away, which is disappointing because I ordered it before lunch. Today is the king's birthday, it's a public holiday, so it's not going to get away today. And uh, and that company has now started using the worst delivery service entirely, and so I might be lucky to see that in about three or four days' time. Not happy about that. Anyway, so all I can really do now is uh, I'll get in, I'll make up some tea nuts for this and go to clean up all the edges and everything and reassemble it then and see what it looks like. Alrighty, so while you guys weren't looking this morning, I've... Uh, Cleaned all the burrs up on this and given some of it a coat of paint. Uh, sparkling black on the base because I don't have much of this green left and uh, I, can't. I went to both of the local stores that sell it and neither of them had any. So anyway, uh, all the bearings greased up, oil in here. Is this the same table? Look, there's hardly any play in that at all now compared to what was there before. And that's just using that shitty old steel uh, gear I just cleaned it up a bit. That damn bit of brass I ordered still hasn't been shipped. But anyway, 
but with this nut all uh, tightened up in place and uh, lock tighted in there and some washers on it and they've got about eight millimeter or bigger holes in in there for two six mil bolts so i spent a little bit of time winding this in and out all the way to the forward front and all the way to the back to uh, to make sure that was in the right spot it's it a little bit tight right at the very back as you're just running out of travel and the same at the front gets a little bit tight right at the very front as you're running out of travel Just, oh no, it's not too bad, just there. Just right at the end. Anyway, so uh, I don't know how much more I'm going to be able to get done. I, I haven't got anything much here to make some uh, peanuts out of. I've got this, but it's not uh, it's not really thick enough, but I might just make a couple with some 8mm threads in them just to uh, see how it all fits in there. But that's that for now. Alrighty, raining here today. At this point in the video, I'd like to thank my patrons once again for their value support, especially the patron who stumped up the cash to pay for this. Uh, if you'd like to be a, become a patron, there's a link down in the description. You can join up there and toss me a couple of dollars every week because every little bit helps. If you don't wish to become a patron, there's always buy me a coffee. There's a QR code there on the screen you can scan now. Or if you don't want to do either of those things, you can uh, use that thanks button down there. Alrighty, I'm going to have to admit that I'm not going to get any further with this. I just discovered that we're in the middle of a six day long weekend. I didn't even know it was on until I woke my daughter this morning to say, come on, get up, get ready for school. She informed me that... Mm, she hasn't got to go to school till for another three days. But anyway, that brass still hasn't been shipped. And considering today, tomorrow and the next day are all public holidays, I seriously doubt that it'll be shipped for another three or four days yet. And then it'll be another two or three days before I get... Uh, and Wednesday, uh, today's Monday, so I've only got today and tomorrow to get anything done before uh, I get that chunk chopped out of my leg. I also need a new DRO for the back because the one is uh, for X because the one I've got now is not long enough and I really would like to try and get all the DRO mounting sorted out here on the bench rather than over there uh, where it's going to be considerably more difficult like it was when I fitted up the originals. So I'm going to have to leave it here. Uh, I'll be back to you when, uh, when I've had this chunk removed out of my leg and the doc says, yep, you can start being a little bit more active again. But anyway, thanks for watching. It's hard to say I hope you enjoyed this because there's been nothing much to enjoy. But anyway, once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.